struggling situation, I want to encourage you to think about this simple word today that we need to learn to make better choices. Do you know what? I saw this quote this week and I thought it was interesting to me. I, I believe I agree with it according to Deuteronomy, what we were just reading. Our choices determine our destiny. I said our choices determine our destiny. I could even take that a little bit bigger. I could say our choices determine our eternity. Do you all agree with that statement today? Your choice of whether you reject or you accept Jesus Christ, that determines your eternity today, my friend. And very well the same thing that choices that we make in a daily life and daily decisions, they determine our de destiny. They determine where we end up. We see that clearly in the pages of, of Luke today. Let's just take a moment if we can. And let's just look at, I'm going to just give you two right here of the, of, the, of the bad choices that he made, that the prodigal son made. And I want to share with them with you quickly. Number one, the prodigal son made the choice to disrespect his father and his family. I said the prodigal son made the bad choice of disrespecting his father and disrespecting his family. Well, how do you mean by that, Pastor? You have to understand in their culture, most just like ours, that the inheritance was not given until the patriarch of the family had passed. In other words, until the parents had passed, the inheritance would not go unto the children. But what did this young man say? He said, I want my inheritance and I want it now. In other words, very simply what he was saying to his father, in essence, he was saying, I'm more concerned about my inheritance than I am you are being alive. I'd rather have the money than I would your fellowship. I'd rather have what you have financially than I would have in being in your presence. I mean, you know, how many of you know that's disrespectful to his father? That he had no respect of his father. I'm going to just throw this in there if I can. If, you're, if you lack respect for others and you have the mindset of this young man right here today that it doesn't matter what happens to anybody else as long as I'm happy, I want to tell you today you're headed down a dead end road. If when you're only concerned about self and you're not concerned about anybody else just as long as my boat's floating, everybody else could be sinking, you're headed down a dead end road. Why is that? I'm going to give you a word of wisdom today. Listen to me carefully. Don't burn the bridges behind you because you might have to cross them again one day. I said, don't burn the bridges that are behind you because you'll have to cross them again one day. Let me say it another way. Those people that you've been stepping on climbing up are the same people you're going to pass on the way down. That's a fact in life, I promise you. Why? Because what a man sows, a man will what? Reap, amen, I believe firmly in that word. I want you to say this with me. People matter. Say that with me. People matter. Look at somebody beside you and say, you matter. Go on and tell somebody, you matter. Amen. People matter. People matter. Do you know what? I hope y'all had your breath mints when you done that. Amen. I see somebody you doing that. Amen. That woke some of y'all up this morning. Amen. People matter. To the prodigal son... People didn't matter. Did you hear what I said? To the prodigal son, people didn't matter. He was just concerned about getting what he wanted, Brother Larry. He was not concerned about anybody else but self. We talked about selfishness a few weeks ago. But I want to remind you today that the Lord desires us to be concerned about people just the way we're concerned about our own selves. Can I share with you Mark chapter 12 this morning, verses 30 and verse 31. And you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart with all of your soul, with all of your mind, with all of your strength. This is the first commandment. Everybody say, the first commandment. All right, now, and the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Amen. Can I tell you what Jesus also said? He said, all of the other commandments hang and they hinge on these two right there. If you will put these two things at the first and the foremost in your life, I promise you all of the, everything else will fall into place. All the other Ten Commandments that God gives about having no other gods, no false idols, don't take the Lord's name in vain. If you put that one right there at the top to love God with all of your soul, your mind, your heart, and your strength, you're not going to have to worry about those, are you? They're going to fall into place. If you, find, if you put it in your heart to love others as you love yourself, you're not going to have to worry about stealing from others. 
being jealous or lustful over others or committing adultery, stealing or murdering, all of those things are going to fall into place. People matter today. Relationships matter. Therefore, how you treat other people matter today. Can I tell you, your choices can come back to bite you if you're not careful. People matter. The prodigal son made the bad choice of disrespecting his father and his family. Number two, this, the prodigal son made the bad choice to waste his possessions on prodigal living. I said the prodigal made the bad choice of wasting his possessions on prodigal living. I really should change that. And put, should put on there, waste his father's possessions on prodigal living. There's an old saying that goes like this, easy come, easy go. I think that that saying applies very well to this passage of Scripture. Because that young man had not sweated, and that young man had not broken his back for many of the things that he received from his father, and that when he went to that foreign land, he was able to just... Uh, Easy come, easy go. Why? Because he'd not labored for it. He'd not saved for it. He had not worked for it. You know, one thing that we do today in, in many uh, young families today, I want to encourage you, make your children work. I want to encourage you with all of my heart. I don't care if they're five years old. Give them responsibilities. Give them something that they have to do. Why? Anything that you work for, you will appreciate more. That's a fact of life today. And so many times today we give our children things and we just give and we give and we say and we use this saying, well, I want my children to have more than I had. But when we do that, we're not giving them the things that you did receive, such as work ethic and respect and accountability, and the list goes on and on and on. Amen. Encourage you to make your children to work. Amen. I encourage you in that. Easy come, easy go. And this young man went and he spent this easy money that he had received. I like definitions. If you've come here for a few weeks, you know that I like definitions. And one I, looked up, I wanted to look up the defin of, of definition of prodigal. And this is what it says. Webster says, um, Spending money or resources freely and recklessly, wastefully extravagant. That's what prodigal means. Wastefully extravagant. In other words, he spared no expense, this young man did. He lived very wastefully. He didn't worry about tomorrow. You know what his motto was? YOLO. I know some of y'all use that in here. YOLO. Y'all know what that means? You only live once. You only live once. I can imagine when they, he was sitting at the bar and they, he had just done drunk a whole six pack and they said, you want some more? YOLO. Bring it on. You only live once. Bring it on. And they lived by that motto. He, some of y'all got that. Some of y'all still, you, you, Y-O-L-O, YOLO. Y'all got it today, amen? You only live once. I see some of y'all looking like, what did he say right there? YOLO, <laughs> letters today, amen. Glory to God. Some of you are awake. Some of you, I'm going to get you woke up this morning. He didn't worry about tomorrow. He just said, well, I'm going to live for today. I ain't going to worry about anything else. I ain't going to worry about it. But you know what? I'm going to tell you, some people live by that motto of Matthew chapter 6. Jesus himself said, do not worry about tomorrow. Do not worry about tomorrow. But I want you to get this too also. I believe the Bible also tells us to prepare for tomorrow and also to prepare for the things that we see coming. Amen? How many of you want to see tomorrow? I just want to ask you something. Anybody today, we'll have a funeral today if you're ready to go. I mean, we got a cemetery right there if you're ready, amen. But most of us, I believe, we want to see tomorrow. I don't know about you, but I hope to see, I hope to see 90. I hope to see 92. I hope to see 100, amen, if I'm in good health, if the Lord lives. And so guess what I've got to do? I've got to prepare for that, amen. I've got to prepare for that. Just let me give you a word of wisdom. This young man was just living for the day. He was just living carefree. He didn't care about anything or anybody. He just said, let's live it up today. But guess what happened? A famine came. Famine came and hard times come. And this young man found himself in a place of want, in a place of need. Can I tell you what I've seen before with people? When they get a little bit of extra money, can I get real personal? Today? When they get a little bit of extra money... They make it rain, baby. They just, they shuffle it out, buddy. Man, you they high rollers, amen. Woo, let a few weeks go by. 
and some of them bills start coming in that they forgot about. Oh, the car payment comes due. The house insurance comes due. Oh, this happens. Have a tire blow out. The car breaks down. And then the next thing is, is oh, God, I need my money back. Help me through, God. And directly, time will pass, and they'll get over that. And guess what will happen? They'll get a little bit of money back in their pocket, and they're making it rain again. And they're coming back down. Oh, and them bills, some of them bills come back due, and guess where they back again? Oh, God, I need some more money, God. And it's a cycle. Woo! Come on now. Am I getting real this morning? We live like that old prodigal son. Well, we can make it rain, baby, with the best of them. But then when old hard times come, we ain't got nothing left, and we go to crying. See, that's why we have to be prepared for today. Will you put up this next scripture, Proverbs 22, verse 3? It says, a prudent man foresees evil, and he hides himself. I love that scripture. In other words, a wise looks ahead. I said a wise man looks ahead. There's a difference between concern and worry. Did you hear what I said? Worry. Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. That's when you just, you ain't doing nothing about it. But concern is when you're actually accomplishing something. Amen. Just a thought this morning. Prudent man foresees evil. I want you to think about that for just a minute. Why I'm on this cycle of, of he, he was often wasteful in his living. He went through this cycle that he went round and he went round and he went round. Amen. Many times we do that in our life. We make it rain and broken and we come back up. Do you know what I've seen this cycle? God just kept laying this on my heart today. This cycle that many people go through. And that's what I really want to preach on. They go through cycles in their life because of the choices that they make. And they're one minute they're up. And then they're up for just a little while. And then they come around and they make some more choices. And then they're back down. And it's a cycle. I've seen it. I've witnessed it as a pastor. I've been in ministry all of my life. And I've seen it over and over and over and over again. With their money, they do that cycle. They get a little bit ahead and they'll blow it. And then they'll get in a tight and go to crying and praying and asking God to help them. They're in the hog pen. They're in need, amen. They're in want. They're in struggle. And then directly they'll get out of it, amen, and they'll make the same choices again. They'll make the same choices again, Pop. They'll make the same choices again. Not only have I seen that with financial issues, but can I tell you something? I've seen that in the church today. I've seen that in the church where people are doing good, when they get to doing good. Do you know what I have found seeing people do? When everything's going good and they're on top of the mountain, I've seen people make choices. They say, well, I'm doing pretty good without the Lord. I don't have to go to church as much as I used to. I don't need to be there on Wednesday nights, these fellowships. That's just a waste of my time. I don't need to pray like I used to. And we get away with it because we're so busy with all the things God's blessed us with. And so, but guess what happens? Hard times come. We fall down and something happens, Pop, and guess what happens? we right here. We're praying, God, help us. Please, and crying and pleading. And guess what? Then God helps us up, and we get back up. And after a while, everything's smoothed out again. Well, we're serving the Lord, but guess what happens? Then we go back, and we start leaving the church again, leaving His Word again, leaving prayer again. And guess what happens? Things fall back apart, and then we back down here pleading, and we run back to the church pleading and crying, and say, God, please help me out of this situation I done got myself into. And then we do it again. Everything will get going good again. Oh, we ride it out for just a little while. And we forget about the Lord again. Oh, and we roll back down the hill again and we come running back. Anybody know what I'm preaching this morning? Let me tell you something. I've been in ministry long enough to know I've seen it many times that people will use the Lord. Can I tell you something? God is a present help in your times of trouble. But many times the only time we run to God is when we're in trouble. Amen. And we go through this cycle of round and around and around and around. But I want to encourage you today to stop living that way this morning and start making better choices for yourself and for your lives. Amen. Think about what I'm talking about today. I've seen it in marriages today. As I get in this cycle, everything going good, everything going good, and they get to fussing and a fighting. Y'all ever fuss and fight? Pop, you ever fuss and fight? Larry, I ain't gonna ask Brother Larry this morning. Let me move right on over here. Fuss and fight. Glory to God. Woo! Come on now. We fuss and fight, and we roll back down in that old hog pen because of the decisions that we made when things was going good. 
And then we go to say, Lord, God, please help us out of this mess. Lord, we're going to do it your way now, God. We're going to do it your way. 